This is a Construction Tales brief safety topic. In this video, let's discuss some common power tool components. In my previous video, we discussed the history and major innovations that led to the birth of the electric power tool. We even scratched the surface on contributions for electrical power and motors that make it possible to even create the power tool. Look out for that video to check out first before reviewing this content with me. We have come a long way from the invention of the first power tool in 1895. We have benefited from power tools that were rigorously tested and sent up with NASA astronauts for space missions. The average citizen now benefits from the birth of next level space technology. Let's break down the average tool into its common parts. Once we identify the basic components, let's review how each part contributes to the function of the power tool. Here are the main replacement components of a power tool. Power switch, batteries, power cord, carbon brushes, bearings, accessories. Power switch. One of the most important components of the power tool would be the power switch. Without a power switch, you do not have the capability to safely turn on and turn off the power tool. Therefore, you're dead in the water and unable to do your work. A power tool that cannot be shut down properly creates a safety hazard for the operator. Having to replace a power switch is a common occurrence for power tools after extended use. A damaged or worn out power switch makes it a challenge to operate the power tool. A damaged power switch can typically be discovered quickly by visually inspecting the power tool for damage. Power tools can overheat and that can cause the power switch to burn out or melt. If any of this damage is discovered with the power switch, it is essential to immediately take the tool out of service and make the needed repairs or replace the entire power tool. Battery. As an avid cordless power tool user, you have already learned how quickly batteries drain out. Feel free to sigh in agony about that cordless battery that used to always die on you during important tasks. Batteries are the power tool component that needs to either be totally replaced or recharged the most often. Some tools use specific size disposable batteries that are designed for one-time use. Other power tool models use rechargeable batteries that are accompanied by a charger with a power cord. Those rechargeable battery types can be reused by charging them either through a charging port on the tool itself or by using a separate charging device. With continuous use, the lifespan of a rechargeable battery can be greatly reduced. Other external factors such as water or high heat will affect the life of the battery. Battery fuel cells can burn out prematurely by continuously storing a battery within a high heat work environment. Once the fuel cell dies down, it cannot be recharged and has to be replaced by a brand new battery. Power cord. Obviously, if you are not using a cordless power tool, you are forced to open up the gang box and use a power tool with a cord that's required to be connected to a power source. These power cord connected power tools are usually made to be very durable and long lasting compared to a cordless power tool. I always recommend having at least one power cord connected power tool just in case your batteries all decide to simultaneously go on vacation together. Word is that that is against company policy, so what are the odds of this foolery happening? Power tools have multiple layers of insulation and protection. The term for these multiple layers of insulation is double insulated. Look for either the term double insulated or the universal symbol for this double insulated tool feature on the tool. Modern power tools are designed to be flexible and strong to hold up to the average construction environment. However, after continuous use, the power cord can surrender its usefulness after daily wear, tear, and abuse. The power cord insulation layers will get damaged and frayed. It's only a matter of time. Suffering a breakage of any of the wires that rest inside the cord will also render the power tool as unsafe. Damage to the power cord or any of the prongs within the plug can be a major electrical hazard for the operator and nearby co-workers. Check your power cords daily to determine if they need replacement. 
Please make sure to take power cord damage very seriously and discard the cord immediately once a hazard is discovered. Carbon brushes. Carbon brushes are the electrical contacts for the power tool. The electrical contacts make the connection for the electrical flow of current between the stationary wires and the moving parts of the power tool. The average carbon brush is typically composed of graphite material. Graphite is a relatively soft material. After repeated use, the carbon brushes are subjected to getting worn down due to friction that occurs within the power tool. Friction happens and heat develops amongst the moving parts. Once carbon brushes are worn down, they can no longer make the same ample contact. Once the contact with the carbon brushes is no longer consistent, the power tool can stop working. This is because the power tool is starved of the electricity that's required to keep it working. The carbon brushes on the power tool need to be replaced as soon as you notice that the power tool is either running at a low speed or not consistently. Witnessing sparks inside the tool can come from worn out carbon brushes. Replace those carbon brushes since this can serve as an electrical hazard for the power tool operator. Bearings. Bearings are a part of the power tool's component that facilitates the sleek and steady movement of all of the power tool's rotary parts. Bearings are typically composed of metal material and are considered to be quite durable. However, over continuous use, the surfaces in contact with bearings tend to either corrode or simply just wear out. Be sure to perform basic maintenance on the bearings, such as periodic greasing or oiling, in order to dodge any potential rusting and or corrosion. You can always guarantee faster deterioration of the bearings if you run your power tool on a very high speed a lot. Deterioration can happen if you choose to use your power tool for unconventional methods. It is inevitable that you will have to replace the bearings at some point in the future. Choosing to operate a power tool with worn out bearings will most definitely diminish its efficiency and performance. Typical symptoms of having worn out bearings include loud screeching noises or the power tool easily becoming overheated. Accessories. Now that we have discovered basic power tool components, let's look at the extra parts. I refer to the accessories as the extra bells and whistles of a power tool that you may or may not even need to function. Accessories are the components that are either built in or have an engineered attachment and are purchased separately. Accessories can be extra parts such as cutting tools, blades, grinding wheels, drill bits. These accessories have a limited shelf life since they wear out or become damaged after continued use. Despite being disposable, and needing to be frequently replaced. Other popular accessories to add onto a power tool include a night light, level, or laser. Some accessories are for safety purposes and must be on the power tool. Safety accessories such as a second handle, safety kill switch, or a guard should always be installed prior to using the power tool. There is even more to discuss within the realm of power tools, so stay tuned for future videos on the related topic. Well, my friend, this wraps up what I have for now on the main components of power tools and how each part is needed to operate the power tool. This concludes this Construction Tales safety topic. Come back for more topics soon.